welcome to this webinar. I'm your host, Mark, from the Agile Testing Days team. I will also be in charge of moderating this webinar. Thank you all for joining this talk. First of all, I wanted to give you a quick podcast introduction in case this is your first time using this tool. As you can see on the right bottom part of the screen, you can access the chat. Feel free to say hello and interact with us. On the right part of our screen below the chat icon, we'll also see a Q&A icon. If any question comes to your mind during this talk, you are more than welcome to ask them there. We'll hold the Q&A session between you and the speaker at the end of this talk. I will then report your question to our speaker. Feel free to let me know in the chat if you need anything else. As you probably know, the 15th anniversary of our Agile Testing Days conference is coming in less than a month. And we are extremely excited to welcome you there. If you haven't done it, uh, you can purchase your ticket to join us on site or online. We'll post a link in the chat if you wish to register. So uh, today's talk is hosted by two amazing speakers from Appmatix, uh, Annika Strack, Team Lead Automation, and Caroline Otzer, Manager and Team Lead UX. Atmatic is also a sponsor of this year Agile Testing Days. This is our first time welcoming them, and we are extremely thankful for their support. So I'm highly encouraging you to visit their booth during the conference. Also, uh, Annika will hold a talk during the conference, Automation as Service, Developing Efficient Testing for ZDF. So be sure to be there if you enjoy our talk. Uh, enough talking on my side, I will now pass the mic to our speaker. I'm inviting them on stage. Wait a second. Uh, yes. Hello, Lynn and Annika. How are you doing? Hi. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Hi. Nice. Um, let me know if you need anything else. Otherwise, I will just uh, mute myself and give you to your talk. All right. Okay. See you. I will come back for the Q&A. Have a good talk. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much uh, for attending this uh, webinar today. Uh, it's a match. Automation meets UX. Perfect partners for accessibility. Uh, I'm Annika Strake. Uh, I'm the team lead of test automation at Admetics, and with me today is. Lina or Caroline. Um, I'm the team lead of our user experience department. We, this is Appmatics, um, are a quality assurance company for apps, websites, and software in general. And um, we love testing. We were founded nine years ago by our managing directors, Ike and Christian in Cologne. Uh, and the idea was to differ from crowd testing methods. So all our testers are employed by us and receive further training and certification. Um, as you can see on the slide, we cover different approaches and methods uh, in this field, uh, like manual testing, test automation, VXUI, um, IoT testing, and also QA consulting. Um, we also test for a large variety of companies, um, such as the BBG, the Berlin Public Transportation Services, whose case study we brought for you today. So it's a very important for us uh, to remain flexible. We think every digital product requires an individual approach uh, in quality assurance. So without further ado, uh, let's dive into our topic of today, accessibility testing. All right. So. Um, testing accessibility is actually becoming an increasingly um, important topic for those involved in product development, which is probably the reason why you are joining in into this uh, webcast today. Um, this is mainly because from mid 2025, actually all digital products will have to meet a minimum of accessibility requirements. Um, this is laid down in the web content accessibility guidelines. Um, in this context, the possibility of being able to test the guidelines with automated tests sounds pretty attractive, which is uh, the reason why we're covering, covering this topic today. Um, but also, um, yeah, I mean, who doesn't want to have a quick and easy way of ensuring that all legal requirements um, of their product are met? 
But today we want to actually explore what automation can achieve and at which point a combined strategy by testing with real users can also make sense. Um, so we want to look at this as um, from a perspective from a dating app. Um, imagine these two testing methods to have a matching experience um, via a dating app today, and we want to guide you through this uh, matching process today. So let's start with, we are looking for an increase of accessibility through testing and are open for combined testing methods. All right, so uh, let's start editing the profile for our test automation accessibility testing. So how exactly can accessibility, accessibility testing be tested automatically? Well, to match, Sure, your page is accessible for all users. Um, you have to add certain things to your elements, like an alternative text or an area attribute, um, so that uh, screen readers and other assistive uh, technologies can in interact with them. <coughs> Sorry. Um, there are several guidelines on how to do this. Um, for example, WCAG, I think we all heard. Um, so we use these guidelines. Um, to write tests um, for web pages. Sorry, I'll join in right on this <laughs> point. So <coughs> the guidelines on how to test this can be found, for example, under, like Annika said, VCAG. Um, we use these guidelines to extract certain rules or tests um, so we can run um, a website against it. Um, so first, um, automation enters your page and scans the whole HTML document. Um, then after the HTML document is scanned, we can test actually each element on the page against these rules. And when we find something, the affected element is being highlighted by a red border. Um, afterwards, we, the automation, makes a screenshot with all highlighted elements and writes a report. Um, the report includes every link we tested and for every link, every guideline of the element that were affected. Um, I will show, or Annika then hopefully <laughs> will show an example reporting later in this talk. So let's look at this. Well, um, I've got to try. I'm sorry, I have a little bit of cold. Um, Thank you, Lena, for um, you know uh, keeping up. <laughs> so um, there are uh, pros and cons to all procedures. So um, on one hand, test automation in general is quite fast and efficient. Um, so the test only takes a few minutes, but um, yeah, it's also not very pricey. Um, once you set up the tests, um, you can run them as often as you like. And uh, maintenance costs are also comparably low. Know. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but the biggest advantage, in my opinion, is that you can use these tests from the beginning, uh, very early on in the development process. <coughs> Sorry, I think you made a good okay. over again. I'm sorry. <coughs> All right. Um, I'll just start from the beginning. <laughs> Okay, so with this procedure, we can actually encounter several pros and cons. Um, so one on the one hand side, I want to tell you about more of the pros. Um, test automation is generally quite fast and efficient. Um, it only takes uh, uh, only a couple of minutes to do so. Um, also, it is very um, not very pricey. Uh, once you set up the test, you can actually run them as often as you want. And the maintenance costs are also comparably low, which is quite nice. Um, so when you do start testing with real users, um, you will actually also have a good foundation because then you know from uh, the beginning on which uh, yeah, steps you can or which focus points you can actually um, start a test on. Um, cons, on the other hand, um, there is obviously no human uh, judgment involved. Um, for example, alternative texts of images or links should be um, meaningful. Um, the automation uh, only tests whether this text exists or not. So it doesn't say anything about 
um, yeah, anything about what is like actually in the content. Um, also, the test results can be misleading. Um, so it might look like if everything has passed and everything is green in the automated report um, and that you are on the safe side, but actually um, it can uh, be that, um, or it's actually the case that automation can only check a limited number of criteria and will never be able to check all the criteria that there are out, um, out there. Also, um, right now, as far as we know, um, there is actually no good automation tool that can test apps on mobile devices. Um, so we are actually working on a solution currently to fix this problem. For the time being, we can only test on websites. All right. Um, well, and here comes the moment where I would actually uh, come in. Um, so it, it's actually the moment in which human judgment can become the game changer for this. So this is actually the reason why we made this talk in the way we prepared it. We wanted to show um, on which points automated testing can be a good starting point and at which um, time it's actually um, useful to then take um, additional uh, user testing into perspective. Um, so the question is, at which exact moment should you actually engage in user testing? To answer this, um, let's look at the best reasons for actually including real users into your accessibility testing process. Um, first of all, it um, enables you to evaluate your product from the perspective of individuals. Um, in this case, of course, of individuals with disabilities, and you can provide valuable feedback on their actual experience and any barriers they encounter. If you aim to conform to accessibility standards and guidelines, as Annika already said, um, for example, the VCAG, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, um, it might make sense to involve real users because they can actually then help verify that your product truly meets the required criteria and that it's not just uh, theoretically compliant. <coughs> Real users can also <coughs> provide into how well your product works with various assistive technologies, such as screen readers, speech recognition, or any other um, assistive technologies there are out there. And also uh, one more con is that you can test on multiple devices. So, for example, like I said, in the case of um, test automation, we haven't yet found a way to test apps with um, automated um, services or testings. Um, in this case, with real users, you can actually test everything on multiple devices, and we would actually then also recommend to test it on um, a real user's device so you get the real experience. Um, last but not least, watching real users can help to obtain um, the support and buy-in of your key stakeholders. Um, this includes uh, executives or project managers and team leaders, um, because when they understand and literally experience or watch their users fail within their product, um, they can see the importance of, of the topic of accessibility and they are hopefully more likely to prioritize it throughout the project lifecycle. Okay, um, so as Annika or <laughs> as we did before for the automation part, um, I want to show you the character strengths and weaknesses that there are for um, yeah, the approach of going with methods from the user experience um, setup. So, what are actually strengths of the method of using user interface? Um, first of all, it generates a high quality of results, um, especially the practical re recommendations can be helpful because you actually get um, yeah, like input from the users on how they would like to have the product improved. And it also gives you recommendations for next actions. Um, also, it offers a good return on investment. Um, this is because you can actually already use uh, or interview um, with five to eight um, users. Um, here, it's important that you actually choose relevant users to um, the questions you want to um, get solved. Um, 
But if you find those relevant users of the target group, it's actually um, sufficient enough if you have five to eight interviews, approximately about an hour um, to go through the, um, the app or the product you're um, looking at. And also this enables you to find more than 85% um, of all accessibility or usability problems that you might encounter. Um, one more thing is if you see how people fail to use, this can actually be an eye opener for stakeholders. Um, it's, yeah, there's nothing comparable out there than actually watching people with disabilities using your product. And um, last but not least, in addition to finding accessibility problems, um, you will also evaluate um, the, your product with people with disabilities. And this usually reveals general usability problems and those impact all users, inclu including those with or without disabilities. Um, so on the other hand, we of course also have weaknesses. Um, first of all, we may not, or the, the method may not give you the answer to all questions. Um, but on this point, keep in mind that product development always is an um, iterative process. So in my opinion, I think you will never reach uh, all answers to any questions of your product. Um, second, disabilities are broad. So you can't, um, or normally you can't test all disabilities in just one project. Um, and it might seem expensive as a method because um, of course it's time consuming. You have to actually invite people. You have to organize everything. You have to conduct the interviews. You then have to extract and analyze all the topics um, that you found from the interviews. Um, so overall, it takes more resources to plan and a higher organizational effort to execute the method. Um, we want to now switch over to one of our client cases because we thought this might be uh, the most interesting to you actually. Um, so let's look into one of our projects that we executed for our client Berliner Verkehrsbetriebe. Um, the Berlin Public Transportation Service is um, yeah, in which we actually tested their product BVG Mover app. Um, but of course, under this term, you won't really know what this product is about. So what is actually the BVG Mover app? Um, it is an inclusive on-demand ride pooling offer. So it actually combines two services. Um, one, a ride service for people with limited mobility and a function of a shared cab. Um, it was developed for situations in which elevators um, fail or are missing, or um, there are non-functioning escalators. And as you can imagine, for people with disabilities, this might become a real problem in their, um, yeah, when they want to actually get from one point to another. Um, in such cases, the BVG Mover app can come to a rescue. Um, it offers along the particular U and S-Bahn routes in Berlin, um, the uh, service that serve as a, serves as an elevator substitute. All right, so um, let's take a closer look on how we actually started into this project. Um, the starting point was that we um, got in contact with our client, BVG. Um, they knew, or they, they actually told us that they knew that they have some problems regarding the accessibility of the app, um, especially the initial installation of the app and website were known to the, um, were known that there were problems and the resp responsible stakeholders, um, yeah, reached out to us because of that. Um, however, also, they found it difficult to convince the technical stakeholders. Um, they had problems to actually show them um, the importance of adjustments to the app and the overall process. So they kind of knew that they wanted to change something. They just didn't know what. And they didn't know how to actually show, um, especially technical stakeholders, on how important this topic was. Um, 
Also, they told us that the transition from discovering a sign in a subway station to installing the app from a landing page of the website and making a first booking was actually anticipated as one of the biggest hurdles um, for people with disabilities. And as you can imagine, um, not only if you're disabled, but also in a stressful situation, such as um, you're standing in a train station in front of a broken elevator, uh, yeah, you might want to uh, really um, be able to execute what you're trying to execute with the app and the process overall. Um, so the goal of the project was um, executing an accessibility and um, usability testing with interviews. Um, for this, we actually chose representatives of the target group, people with impaired mobility. Um, in this case, um, you need to actually think about which kind of group is actually this. So you can't always just say, okay, people with impaired mobility, of course, they're going to be permanently limited people with, uh, for example, people in wheelchairs. No, um, you should actually think about which other groups that might be that are, for example, age-related limited. So we also actually recruited people um, or persons from that were older and using a walking aid. And um, the third group that we actually looked at were situationally, uh, or situationally limited people. Um, for example, parents with baby carriages. Um, we wanted to actually test the app and the overall process um, and check it for user friendliness and accessibility. And we wanted to get an answer to the question um, to which extent the app was usable for people with and without mobility. Um, subject of the test was that we examined or ex that we actually tried to examine um, the entire customer journey of the app. So from the notice on the elevator, you can uh, imagine um, there's like a small paper thing that actually is um, on an elevator, if it's broken, um, then you take your smartphone, you scan the QR code, then you actually um, first will be redirected to a website. Um, then you have to, have to understand the service. Uh, and then from understanding the service, you're meant to then download the app and then go into the app and commissioning, um, for example, um, yeah. Uh, the app itself, the installation process, and then also booking um, a substitute ride. All right. Yeah, so um, as promised, I want to show you uh, how uh, the results of an automated accessibility test could look like. And um, also, again, thank you very much, Lina, for stepping in. Um, I'm very glad we practice um, these, uh, this talk a little bit before. Um, <clears throat> so on the left-hand side, you can see um, all the links we have tested. And this, uh, these are the links to the uh, BBG MUVA information website, um, where you can get all the information about the service um, and also download the app. <clears throat> on the right-hand side, you can see um, the guidelines um, we tested it against. Um, and you can see it uh, looks very, very green, very good. Um, there's only one small thing down here. Um, apparently, um, a landmark is not unique. Um, there are two um, elements here that have the same landmark. This is a CSS locator, which is quite useful for the developers um, to find um, the element. Uh, but we also, as uh, Athena has mentioned, um, a screenshot um, where you can see um, which elements um, are uh, affected and this is the navigation bar here and also this text box um, yeah so i think uh, this is a good solution for both um, developers and also uh, non-developers um, who might uh, want to have a look at a reporting like this right okay so let's um, get back to the testing results that we actually um, got for this project um, as you saw, the automated reporting of the website is a great example, um, actually, of why additional user testing can be worthwhile. Um, as you can see, uh, or as you saw, um, technically almost no accessibility issues were detected, uh, which 
yeah, might seem good because you think uh, you're on the safe side and um, actually, yeah, uh, obeying all the rules. But um, when watching real users, we actually discovered um, that the service itself um, had many, many challenges. And we only discovered these by actually testing with real users and understanding that they um, had really big problems in understanding um, the service. So all in all, we found six major 12 series and 13 cosmetic um, accessibility or usability issues um, by executing eight interviews. Um, they were um, taking about one hour, the interviews, and we tested them, as I mentioned before, with disabled users. Um, the main um, result was that we discovered that the setup process was found to be too lengthy. So it pretty much um, mirrored what our stakeholders or our clients already knew. But this time, we could actually um, have videos and show other stakeholders how important this topic actually is in real life. So um, the participants complained that the path from the notice, um, as I uh, already mentioned, there was like a notice um, or like a paper sheet uh, stick to an elevator that um, wasn't functioning um, and from which you could actually use a QR code um, to come to a very lengthy and explanatory website, which Annika tested. Um, that this actually, this whole process was too lengthy and took too much time. So um, actually none of the subjects said that they would have completed this setup process in a full emergency situation. Um, this also shows that the complexity and the fact that the app is not um, immediately ready to use when faced with a broken down elevator and needing to move on quickly were actually perceived as significant limitations. Um, so this is a good uh, case in which we could see that we really, um, that it does really make sense um, in certain cases to test with real users. So for our dating process, um, let's conclude what does this mean? Um, test automation, well, it's uh, cost and time efficient. And it can help with finding focus points for further testing, and it can support the developers in early, early stages. Therefore, I think it's a really good start into accessibility testing um, and trying out um, like how, how your website might perform. And it's a, a good door opener for user tests in general. Um, yeah, so on the other hand, um, user experience methods such as a user test can help with convincing stakeholders, as I met, said uh, many times before, um, because it can actually make them act on making your product more accessible. Um, it also expands empathy for disabled users. Um, I can also tell you from my own experience as an interviewer, it's really mind changing when you watch people that are disabled and how they actually find ways still to use your products, even though there are a lot of barriers in them. Um, and last but not least, it is perfect for generating high quality results um, on top of automated tests. So in the end, we would say it's a perfect match. Um, both methods can um, enrich each other um, exactly. Yes. So um, if you're uh, interested in exchanging even more about the different ways of uh, testing accessibility, um, feel free to contact us either through our website, LinkedIn, or just by email. Um, yeah, thank you. Just scan this QR code uh, and download our white paper. And um, yeah, thank you very much. And um, I don't know, are there any questions? Okay, uh, thank you very much for your talk. It was uh, really insightful. Uh, just a few questions. So, yeah, well, do you get the participants from that are disabled and can take part in an interview? How did you find them? Um, sorry, can you tell again the question? Yeah, well, do you get participants from that are disabled and can take part in an interview? 
Ah, okay. Um, so this is actually, um, yeah, not so easy um, because, well, it is always hard to find people with the, in parentheses, right disabilities. So actually we are working with a labor laboratory um, and this laboratory is specialized in uh, digital participation of people. And we actually use their network to, um, to be able to reach out to people with certain disabilities um, and uh, we then invite them to participate in our interviews. Okay, okay, nice. And uh, second question, how do you decide on which target group of disabled person uh, you're going to work with? Mm -hmm. um, so, well, it always depends on which product you're testing. Um, so in the first step, of course, we look at what kind of product it is and which target group is associated with the product. Um, it might be the case, as you saw in the BVG MUBA app, um, that was pretty clear because it was a service which is directed uh, uh, to people that actually are um, uh, disabled in their mobility. So that was kind of easy to find and to actually um, decide on which target group to, to test with. Um, in other cases, um, this might be a lot more broader. So um, we uh, then try to just represent a wide range um, of disabled people, um, which is actually then the reason why we uh, tend to conduct interviews with eight people rather than just with five people. And last but not least, um, also, our customers um, have a, uh, mostly have specific requirements. Um, so we just discuss with them what their requirements are or which wishes they have, um, and then we agree with them and decide which people to actually interview. Okay, great. Um, so if there's no uh, other question in the chat, uh, I think, uh, I would just like thank you for your talk. It was like really interesting. I would like to remind uh, all attendees to um, join um, the Agile Testing Days and come like visit Appmatic directly at their booth. Um, uh, if you enjoyed this talk, uh, Annika will also hold another talk during the conference on the 15th at 4 p.m. The title of the talk is like Automation Service. Developing efficient testing for ZGF. If you want, we can present it a bit more, uh, Anika. Uh, if you have um, to say about it. Yeah, uh, sure. Um, we talk about um, how test automation, um, you know, sometimes um, can be quite high maintenance, and how we solve this problem for ZGF, uh, which is a uh, um, GB. Uh, uh, in uh, TV company in, in Germany. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, thank you again for your participation. Uh, we are excited like, to see you in November in Potsdam and I wish you all a great afternoon. Thank you, Mark. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Welcome. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.